guys my name is shivam gupta and i'm here with my first valuation video of the company which is a gem of the portfolio of the ace investor mr rakesh junjunwala yes you guessed it right it is titan company limited though he has been seen reducing his stake in the company but still he owns a whopping 5.53% along with his wife which converts itself into something around 4 crores and 90 lakh shares Titan Company is a joint venture between Tata Group and Tamil Nadu Industrial Development Corporation. Over the past three decades, Titan Company has expanded itself into varied sections, varied segment of business like apparel, jewelry, eyewear, and watches. Along the years, it has also come up with its brand Titan, Tanish, Titan I Plus, Sonata, and Fast Track, and many other more, along with the varied product line. The onset of the pandemic and the nationwide lockdown has also been visible from the financials of the company. The company has posted a loss of more than 300 crores in the first quarter for the financial year 2021. As the purchasing power of the public at large has declined, the profits and the growth in the sales has also been halted. However, being confident of the long-term stability of the company, we shall proceed with the calculation of the numbers. For any valuation, assumptions plays a key role. Starting with the assumptions, we have assumed the long-term growth rate in earnings before interest and taxes that stand at 5.5 percent, which is less than the 5.9 percent that is the risk-free rate. The market price of the share at the moment is 1,140, and the outstanding shares are 88 crores 77 lakhs. Hence, we come up with the market capitalization. The debt of the company for the financial year 2020 was 2656.5 crores, and the cash and the balance sheet was reported as 356 crores. And the net debt we came out with was 2300 crores. Thus, we came out with the enterprise value at what market was valuing the company. This gives us the equity upon debt to equity ratio. The cost of debt is the risk-free rate plus the return default spread of the company, which is I have assumed as one percent, but actually is 0.69 percent as it as it is rated as triple A plus. Uh, why I have assumed one percent is because of seeing the corona situation. There is a instability not only in the company but entire entire sector. The marginal tax rate is assumed as 36 percent, which we use. to compute the cost of debt after tax the cost of equity is computed as risk free rate plus beta into net uh, net of mar- market returns and risk free rate the risk free rate as i mentioned earlier was 5.9% the beta was 1.24 this was computed as bottom of beta the bottom of beta is the average of the se- uh, company of in the similar sectors the market premium was 2.56% and hence we compute the weighted average cost of capital of 8.955% now starting with our valuation we start with plugging in the top line item for the years 2018 19 and 20 and then subsequently moving on to making our assumptions for the following years We have assumed a decline of 40% in the sales of year 2021, and thereby increasing the sales as assumed with the growth rate, making the company to recover its its position of what it was in the pre-COVID levels by the end of 2024. Similarly, plugging in the numbers for EBITDA, EBIT. and the tax rate is assumed as what the company was paying compa- in comparison with the sales and the earning before interest and tax before the corona the nopat is calculated and depreciation is added back the working capital inflow and the capital addition is sub- subtracted to get the free cash flow to the firm free cash flow to the firm is the cash that is left with the company after making for operating expenses we then taking the discount rate 
we have computed the discount factor which we multiplied with the unlevered FCF and on the multiplication we get the present value of the FCF. Now moving on to the major chunk of what gives us the value is the terminal value. The terminal value for the company is computed as shown. The weighted average cost of capital is computed as 7.2% in the long term. Long term growth rate in EBIT as mentioned earlier is taken as 5.5%. We compute terminal value by taking the levered FCF and multiplying it with the growth rate and dividing by the weighted average cost of capital minus long term growth rate. As done earlier to the unlevered FCF, we discounted back to get its present value that stands at 82,221 crores. The terminal value forms a major chunk of our total value what we get that is 91%. We get the enterprise value as equity value plus net debt. Equity value we came up with 82,000 crores as the terminal value and the rest of the value as present value of the unlevered FCF. This highlighted blue cells. We then subtract out the debt and cash and add the cash. We get the equity value that stands at 88,000 crores and which is divided by the number of outstanding shares to get the fair value per share. At the moment, the fair value of the per share is 9, 991 rupees and a share is trading at 1,140 rupees. So, According to me, it is a bit overpriced by around 150 rupees. But yes, it is because of this assumption of fall in sales. I'll show you something. If I reduce this fall to, let's say, minus 20%, what the change in value we see is. It is underpriced. Yeah. We get a fair value per share of 1350 rupees. Change the decline in the sale to see at what market is assuming. Now let us take around 30%. So we see the fair value comes out to be 1172. So market is assuming. A decline of around 31 percent yes to get the fair value of around 1154 rupees so according to me i assume that the decline shall be 40 percent as seen the result of the first quarter and i shall take it as my uh, minus 40 percent this gives me my value of 991 rupees and i stay with my conclusion that it is 10 to 12 percent overpriced based upon the current market scenarios and the numbers which are currently being given out by the market to time here comes the end of the video please like share and subscribe the channel thank you